Yeah, my name is Rodrigo. I'm going to talk about uh, about microservice with Elixir. Uh, uh, before, I'm from a city called Maringa. It's a small city in Brazil. In Brazil, and it's like a this is like a church. It's, it's really tall and it's like the icon of the city. So, and I'm half Italian and half Japanese. So, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's Brazil is weird. And I'm an, I'm an aspiring speaker, also community manager with meetups and stuff. And I'm a sort of starting remote evangelist in my company. So right now we have some internal materials that we're going to try to put it in a more open source, uh, public open way. I work for Encasa.com. We, uh, we are a real estate startup in Brazil. Also, we are fully open source uh, uh, for now. We use React and Elixir. So before starting, I would like to give this talk as a pledge to not use microservices for several reasons. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of microservices implementations. I, I study microservices since the, the or origin of the word in 2014 that just kind of like blew up as a buzzword. And sort of academically and also uh, seen use cases. And I've seen from really great uh, to catastrophic, so it's kind of like a pledge to not use microservices, and maybe Elixir is a good choice for not dealing with that intermediate scale between monolith and microservices. Uh, as a as a material, I will really like this book, uh, Building Microservices. It has a, a good balance of breadth and depth. Or when you wish, if you want to study about it, I study mainly not to use it, which is what the talk, what the talk is about. And it's very technology uh, agnostic. So from the book, I'm going to use a few concepts of microservices. These are like characteristics, not necessarily a good or bad thing. So I'm going to use that to balance uh, a few stuff that we can do with Elixir. So uh, Elixir, for those who, don't, who, who here doesn't know any, any, anything about Elixir, just <laughs> the camera guy. All right. <laughs> Well, he's yeah, he's learning. As an introduction, it's a functional la language. It's, it compiles to the uh, Beam bytecode, and it's designed for scalability and maintainability. And one of my favorite things is that is that the uh, developer experience is a first class. So it's kind of right off the bat a design, you know, like a, a good fit for a microservice style, uh, I think, mindset. Uh, and it's. Yeah, as a simple example as I always use uh, for Elixir, it's a, it's a simple slug file uh, option. Not, not, okay. uh, it has like a, a, DS, a, a macro, it's a pipe that passes the, this parameter to this function, so you can more easily read code linearly instead of like temporary variables or like cascading, uh, cascading calls. It, it has like, it has a, a uh, uh, function as a first class, so I'm, I'm passing a function as a parameter, and high order function, which is receiving a function and just applying to a list. So this this this, this is a, a good, beautiful piece of code that I that I kind of use as an example. Ah, sorry. Is it on now? Yeah. Okay. And for kind of like, since we don't have too much time, I'm going to kind of assume that functional programming itself uh, addresses replaceability and composability. Uh, if you guys are experienced with uh, functional programming, compared to most mainstream program, uh, programming languages, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to do that kind of stuff. And one feature on the, on the Elixir is umbrella applications. So Basically, Elixir is a is a bunch of bunch of modules and a bunch of functions. And the modules, uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a simplistic pro, uh, explanation. And when the VM spins up, those codes may or may not become a process. You can you can be you can, you can have Elixir application that, that is just code, just library. Or when you spin up, you can you can, you can behave differently. And uh, a, a usual, a normal Elixir process can be that, and when you have umbrella applications, you can have different, uh, different 
Elixir applications inside, like like a like a, a visual umbrella application that you can group more easily and organize. So basically, it's it's like apps, and every every folder is a every directory is a, is a, an application itself. Could be a library, could be processes. It depends. It shares uh, two main stuff, main things: a, a configuration and a lock file for the dependencies, so it doesn't have conflicts. And for example, when you are when you have a domain, my domain application here starts uh, starts an application, starts supervisor, and so it's not just code. And every application has its own supervision tree, and the process the, the process are isolated. So that's why that's how uh, you achieve one of the one of the you cross on one of the attributes that, that, I, that I mentioned. And this this is uh, this is when you spin up the observer and see and see the the process. So this is one of my application that is running, and they 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 behave kind of like individu individually and are isolated. So. That's one thing that you, you kind of get with microservices, but with machine physical isolation, here you can have, you can have a little bit more a process isolation, but inside the same VM. And for example, my integration application is smaller, but also independent, so the cr crashes don't, don't affect others. And when you, when you, one of the things that you discuss when, when working with microservices is uh, at which point you split your application like logically or in functionality or just just with just to scale individual stuff. Uh, a change like this when when some when you when I have an uh, an mobile application that depends on another, you can simply replace replace the co the function the modeling function call with uh, an RPC. There are several ways to do it, and you are introducing distribution, but it's as simple as a, a, a one liner. And so. In, in that sense, we, we address single responsibility principle because you can have application not only divided, divided by directory but also by processes in, or at runtime, so they're they are way more isolated and, and safe amongst them. Uh, you have autonomy through uh, airline processes. The, the memory is as isolated, communication through messages. So you, you have a different con concurrency model that you can handle your 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 uh, your application complexity. You have individual restart and crashes don't affect others. So that's, that's address the, the autonomy. Uh, ease of deployment, uh, in, in Erlang you can have an OTP release that you can easily, you can choose between embedding or not the, 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 the Erlang runtime. So if you want to have like a pipeline that every time you deploy, you, you, you deploy a new version of, the, of Elixir, for example, it's gonna be embedded and you just replace on your, on your servers. In easy, in an easy, easy thing to do, but also the the, the machines itself you can you can easily update the version. So it's 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 a it's, it's a different trade off to use releases. And you can you have you can have hot code reloading, but it's a little bit more complex. So that's a good option that other other uh, runtimes doesn't have, don't have. And also organization alignment. Uh, a lot, when, when we talk about microservices, there are a lot of benefits come from splitting the teams according to a service or a set, or a set of services. And when you use umbrella applications, you can easily more divide what's, who's responsible for, for what in the code. And you can have less conflicts. And, and uh, the reviews, for example, are, are, are simpler. So clustering, uh, clustering here, uh, as opposed to Node.js clustering, which is not exactly clustering, but uh, basically every every node that you spin up can be connected to, to one another with a simple command. And when you connect to one node on the cluster, you connect to the whole cluster. And you can be different machines, virtual or physical. And it's as, as simple as just getting the name of the of the of the of the of the of the, of the node and and connecting, and the, the Erlang's clustering al allows a lot of, excuse me, <coughs> a lot of good functionalities. According to Erlang's documentation, I, I've, I've never, I, I, I didn't find exactly a good implementation of it, but it allows no takeover and failover, and also load balancing through process distribution. And also, there's a few 
there's a few libraries in Elixir. One of them, uh, one of these is Warm, also libcluster, that helps with cluster healing and also work stealing and process handoff between the nodes. So it's when a f when a node when a node needs to shut down, it can before shutting down pass down some processes that, so it doesn't get killed. So that kind of addresses scaling and resilience when you are when you, you can have better uh, individual scaling of parts depending on how you how you separate the, the your program's behavior on runtime different from the code and you have a best uh, better uh, cost control and resilience because cascading failure, uh, failures are not global not even local and you can still have uh, individual machine crashes affecting but when you are clustered you have w you have a li way more uh, resilience than than uh, than not being cluster and dependent on external tools as well. But of course, introduces a uh, network failure as a, as, a, as a problem. So that, that has to be taken into account. Uh, as I said, it, these are characteristics, not necessarily uh, good, good or bad. And ports, ports is pretty simple just to kind of pretend we are addressing technological heterogeneity because we can't, we can't cluster other VMs into, into being, at least not easily. So you can have like, uh, you can use ports, write code in C, in Rust, and, or other binaries like uh, someone mentioned using Lua and Python uh, at other, other talk. So that kind of addresses the technological heterogeneity. And as a bonus, or as an overall uh, characteristic, we can we we have the the benefit and and, and the power of domain driven design. Uh, an umbrella app, for example, could be a bounded context, and domain events and integration events are easy, kind of given into in Elixir because of the message passing, message passing, and and actor model. And also, actor models are good aggregates. Uh, if, if you study a little bit of domain driven design, CQRS, and event sourcing, they are an aggregate is a concept that comes around. And it maps really well with, with actor or model. So, depending on the design of the system you want to you wanna provide, it's a good fit. And also, it's great for reactive system, event driven system. Most microservice architectures has to put a, those those kind of uh, mechanisms like events and asynchronicity to reduce the to re reduce the, 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 the cascading failover. And it's a it's a really good middle ground between monolithic and microservices, which was kind of like a, a, a debate on how to approach stuff. Even uh, Fred just gave a talk that you can't from the start build a complex system because that's going to fail. You have to individually, incrementally uh, evolve your system so that, 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 that they are at least a, a, a working piece. And micro, uh, Elixir is a good gap between the monolith and the microservices because a lot of stuff, that, a, a lot of problems that we have from the monolith is, is mitigated, mitigated using Elixir. And also it's moving the transi transition. You, can, you, you already have on, on Elixir, uh, message orientation, you can have pub sub, it, it, it scales easily well. I actually, we, we, we don't run multi-node, but I just experimented with, uh, with our software, just running multi-node and try some sub functionality that's supposed to work by, by duplicating it, and it works like smoothly, like uh, Phoenix uh, presence and subscriptions, uh, GraphQL subscription, I'm sorry. So it's most of, most of the pain points uh, from the transition yeah, is, is already addressed. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. <laughs>